Hey everybody, welcome back to Young Engineers of Today. I, uh, I hope you all had a good weekend. Hopefully you guys did something interesting. Or not, if you wanted that. Whatever. You know, the thing I normally say. How was everybody's weekend, by the way? Good, not much happened. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. Um, I worked. <laughs> it was exciting. I appreciate you asking, though. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear that your weekend was good. Uh, anyway, we are going to continue with Eagle, to nobody's surprise. Um, hopefully we can get the um, <clears throat> the board layout done today. I'd really like to do that, uh, and then uh, and then we can move on to some new material on Wednesday. Um, something that potentially will have nothing to do with CNC machines or PCB or anything like that. Something totally new and fresh. It remains to be seen, but certainly we're going to be going over something different on Wednesday. At any rate. Um, I am probably going to call this class about five to ten minutes early because I have some things I absolutely have to do after class. Um, otherwise, I would I would definitely be willing to to continue going afterwards. It's just today is going to be a little bit unusual. Um, I wanted to let you guys know that up front, so that we were there were no surprises at the end, and. Um, you know, we could we could get everybody, everybody's questions answered and stuff like that by eight o'clock. I actually have to go to my other job, but at any rate, um, we're going to be continuing with Eagle today, and uh, we're going to get some serious work done on the board layout. So why don't we go ahead and get Eagle open? I'm going to do that. I recommend you do too. Nice. So remember now we've got we've got two different um we've got two different uh save files now. We've got the schematic save file and we've got the board save file. I'm just gonna go ahead and open up both so that we can take a look at both of them spend a little bit of time reviewing what we did um, on last Wednesday. So last Wednesday we connected all of this stuff together. And it may not look like it's connected, of course, but that's because we used those symbolic connections. Uh, the same thing we did in 123D circuit with like the ground and the power. We did the, we did the same thing here, there's just a lot more of it. Um, there's a, um, like all of these connections here, are all actually connected to various things on the microcontroller. Uh, likewise, with these these connections off off of the uh, off of the AVR, like all of these things, they're all in fact connected to different things on the microcontroller. So everything's connected, despite how it may look. Um, but that's what we spent pretty much most of Wednesday doing, which is getting all of that done. And then we got started on the board view on Wednesday. We didn't get very far, um, just because there was not really enough time. And in fact, even though I did this, I'm going to have to actually um, rework it a little bit, because there are some things that I didn't take into account at the time that I should have. Uh, but we'll go over that in a moment. But we spent most of the class working on the schematic. We spent a little bit of time talking about this and how you know we've got the board outline here. And we've got the different components that, that correspond to the stuff that we've got on the schematic view. And we've got the we've got the representative connections. So everything's connected. Um, or everything's showing it's showing you how everything should be connected, I should say. That's a better way to put it. 
Uh, we tried to make the board as small as possible. However, there are some modifications that we'll have to make, and I'll go ahead and show you that right now. Um, first of all, this power jack. This is going to be a barrel plug, right? You notice this rectangle right here coming off of the power jack? That's actually where the barrel plug will go. Basically, that's where that's where the power will be plugged into. So as you can see, it's not exactly ideal to have the power be plugged in this way for obvious reasons. There's just going to be a bunch of stuff in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rotate this around. Uh, I have to select move first. That's right. I'm going to rotate this around. Uh, by right clicking. And I'm going to bring it right over. I'm actually going to do a little bit of house cleaning here. I'm going to move this down over to this side. I'm going to move the resistors over. And it's probably going to yell at me a little bit real quick, but we'll, we'll get it figured out. Feel free, um, you know, if, you're, if your system doesn't have this problem, don't, don't sweat it. Um, I'm just apparently bad at putting circuits together, so I made a rookie mistake. A rookie mistake. But, you know, your mileage may vary. Yours may look nice and pretty and beautiful. But I do want to make sure that that barrel plug is off to that side. I'm going to move this set down here. Move this set over. Which does end up freeing up a little bit of space on my circuit board um, for connections to be made more readily, which is good. Now, you might also notice that despite the fact that I've got everything laid out, it's all just kind of a mess. Like, Caution. every, yes, I get, I, thank, you, thank you, thank you, I just want to stop, whatever. Um, everything's kind of a mess, like we've got just crisscrossing air wires everywhere, that's what you can refer to these as, are air wires. However, if we go up to tools, and there are a couple of really useful options in here. Um, the one we're going to check out is Rat's Nest. So I'll go ahead and click that. And what it does is it automatically reroutes all these connections. It doesn't reroute them necessarily, but what it does is it, is it sort of uh, prevents them from overlapping as much as possible so that it looks cleaner and uh, easier to trace all of these connections. So that helped out a little bit if we... Uh, we can undo it and see exactly how much it helped. It might be easier to see on your screen if you try it out under Tools and then Rat's Nest. And then it will, again, it will sort of show how, um, it will show more optimum paths which require less crossing, which is good. That's nice. Now the second thing under here in Tools is something we're not going to use for this lesson. But it is something you can use in the future or in case this just sort of the connections get too crazy or something like that. You've got auto router. An auto router is just like the name suggests, it will automatically create connections. I'll go ahead and do it just to show you what it looks like. And it's thinking, it's thinking. And as you can see the percentage is going up at the top here. And see it's running it's running a whole bunch of different uh optimizations and bam that's what the auto router did for me now if that's if that looks like a mess well you'd be right um, it kind of is I don't exactly have all of my components laid out in an optimal fashion uh, which is that is to say you know I could probably rotate some of the stuff around so there's less crossing we'd have to worry less about you know using both layers of the the PCB stuff like that for now though I'm not going to worry about it too much, and I'm going to do it manual because I'm a masochist. I'm actually going to do manual as far as I can throughout the class, and then we'll just, I'll just go ahead and hit auto router at the end so that we can look at the finished product so that we're ready to go for Wednesday. 
<laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much what we what we've been doing so far. What it's going to look like, um, things like that. Like it's not really anything too crazy from what you guys are used to from uh, from uh, excuse me from one two three D circuit. So with that in mind, we can go over here and we're going to look for the root tool or the route tool, depending upon your preferred pronunciation. Uh, you might also see it under, I guess it's going to be under edit. Yeah, it will be under edit. Um, got root or route here under edit but it's this sort of bent blue wire uh, without the A and it has, you know, and starts and ends at two different green circles. That is the manual route button. And you, as you can see down on the bottom left corner, it says route manually. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. And I'm just going to start by clicking on one of these connections. Now, as you can see, it's a blue wire. And what did a blue wire mean in 123D circuit? Does anybody remember? You're in the right place there, Aiden. Uh, just wrong side. Um, yeah, it's, it refers to the layers. Blue, uh, blue wire generally means the bottom layer. Yeah, exactly. It's the bottom layer. So what we can do is we can go over here to the little drop-down menu in the upper left-hand side. If you click on it, you've got, oh, at least I've got one top and 16 bottom. I'm going to select top because I want this to route along the top. Uh, you'll also notice that whereas in 1, 2, 3D circuit you just could right click in order to change the, the type of elbow that it had, here you select it manually. Uh, wire bend style 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, la la la. Uh, I'm going to use, for right now, I'm going to use wire bend style 0, just that 90 degree angle. Caution. And there we go. We've got one connection created. Yeah! All right, now let's do it over here. And I'm gonna change it to wire bend style one. So we've got this nice little 90 degree, or 45 degree angle going on. Caution. Go ahead and create a connection there. And it's gonna yell at me each time just because it's Eagle circuits and it's gonna be difficult like that. So now, as you can see, let me undo that real quick. Um, if I were to create a route from here to here, it's going to cross over this particular connection right here if I just go straight to it, which is, you know, not okay. We don't want that. Uh, that will create a short circuit and best case scenario, or our circuit just won't work. Worst case scenario, it'll cause some fires. Uh, so what we can do is we can go part of the way, click once, and then we can continue the rest of the way. So I'll hit that, and boom, done. So far, so good. Just from this one connection here, we've got three things connected to it. So we're off to a good start. I'll go ahead and make a connection from... Hello. Make a connection from here to here. I really wish it didn't say that every single time I made a connection. Oh, well. And... Um, I'll go ahead and make one from here to here. And you know, what the hey. We'll go from here to Caution. here. We'll see how long we can take this um, this chain. We'll go from, well, that looks like that's about as far as we're, oh, actually we can, nope, escape. Nope, escape. See, you notice how I, it may be really hard to see, but you see how this wire is a little bit more highlighted, it's a little bit brighter yellow than the other ones? Um, that's because it doesn't exactly know what we're trying to click on, so it's doing its best guess. However, if we right-click, it will cycle through all of the things that we can select underneath the cursor. Well, not all of them, but for most of them. Um, you can left-click to 
verify that selection in case you know it does have the exact thing you want. So I'm going to continue this connection up here and then move it down here. So that's one set of connections. Not too bad. Could be a lot worse. I'm going to go ahead and continue with that. I'm going to do this one a little bit differently. Just go up like that Caution. and go right there. And at this point, this is just, you know, the wire puzzle. You can always change the type of elbow bend in case you want one that's more um, optimal for the connections you're making. Caution. And uh, we'll just see how many non-intersecting wire connections we can make. Uh, maybe I can bring this one around like so. Caution. Yeah, that looks good. And I think we can we can bring this connection. We'll change the bends. That's not the bend we want. That's the that's the bend we want. Caution. So as you can see right now, I'm not doing anything particularly special. I'm just trying to make the best connections that I can. Caution. Now, this is going to get much harder in a little bit once, you know, I start running out of room to uh, make these connections. Caution. We'll cross that bridge when we get there, though. We'll start using the bottom layer. We'll start using vias and things like that. And uh, it will it will start to... The, the connections as a whole will start to all sort of come together nicely. This is not... I want, there we go. Caution. Uh, we'll go ahead and route this up here. Caution. And then this has to, yep, see that has to go along the bottom. Okay. And maybe we'll change the, the wire bend here. I know it's probably not terribly exciting just to sort of hear me mumble to myself as we do this, but this is a largely self-explanatory process. If you have any questions about it, though, you, you know, you're more than welcome to ask. It's, uh, it's not like I'm banning questions or anything. I just, I feel like at this point, you guys are probably used to this from 123D circuit, so you don't need me to, you know, walk you through this entire process. Although I do think I'm rapidly approaching the limit of everything I can do just using the top layer. And then we're going to have to start using the bottom layer. Once we've hit that limit, then we're going to start using vias or vias and uh, switching between the top and bottom layer as we need to. So this is going to get, this is going to get real interesting real fast. So let's see here. That uh, connects to that there. That would be a really big um, bottom level wire. So let's let's hold off on doing that for now. We're gonna go ahead and do this one. And again, yep, as you can see, it automatically selected it for me for some reason. Uh, but it's on the bottom layer, which is perfect, exactly what we need right now. Let's we'll go ahead and route that one there. I believe I just inadvertently made my own life much harder, but that's okay. And then same deal, we'll route that one there along the bottom. So I might run into an issue here, and you guys might be able to anticipate exactly what that issue is. Does anybody have a guess? specifically in, I'm going to use pink here and make this really easy to see, in these two areas. Anybody maybe have any idea why that might be an issue?
Okay, fair enough. Well, in essence, um, both top and bottom layer wires are right here. So our lives, my life, is going to be made a lot harder because I'm not going to be able to cross over these intersections at all with anything because both of our options are taken up right there. We can hit up one of these upper areas, but then we run into the same issue of, well, okay, like, we can't really, you know, go terribly far with either of those. So what can we do? Well, we can do this wonderful little thing called a via. And I know I just was talking about it, but at any rate, in essence, what a via is, is it allows you to start out in the top. So let's say, let's turn this into a 90 degree angle. Nope, wrong kind of 90 degree angle. There we go. Like so, and we'll just go that far. Then I'll switch over to the bottom layer. Caution. And just like that, I've avoided any intersections with any of the wires. It starts out at the top right here, then switches to the bottom layer and goes underneath the other wire. It starts out going above one and then underneath, underneath another one. And that can be incredibly useful for ensuring that um, you know, your connections don't cross, uh, in fact, necessary. And I'll do the same thing with this one, because I got to switch over to the bottom layer, just pop over for a second, and then switch back over to the top, give ourselves a nice elbow bend, or a nice 45 degree elbow. This is beginning to look like I am rapidly gaining a lot of vias, and you'd be right. In fact, I might have actually made this unsolvable for myself. No, definitely not. I just uh, wasn't utilizing the bottom layer to the best of my ability. Caution. There we go. Oh boy, I really wish I didn't say that every single time I connected something. Slowly but surely, we're getting there. Caution.
восемь. And understandably, the computer did a way better job of connecting these things than I did. I'm doing. How's everybody else is looking so far? Good. Yeah. yeah. It's no big deal. Just connecting everything. It's, it's super easy. I don't know what you're. I don't know what you're complaining about. Goodness. We'll come back to that one.
question. Yes, yes, you wanted to tell me. Now keep in mind, just like your schematic view, the wires in the schematic view and everything like that, you can move around your uh, routes so that they are easier to work with. Well, ostensibly easier to work with. Who knows if it actually works out that way in practice. Caution.
And this class is how you can effortlessly make your life harder.
does not want to cooperate with me right now. All right. So, in case you make large-scale errors like I did, there is a rip-up option right next to the route option. An important thing to note about the rip-up option is you rip up individual sections of wires at the same at, at a time. So, if I double-click on this wire over here, it's gone. And you get the little air wire right there. If you double-click on the air wire, it will rip up the entire connection that you routed. So, Useful if you want to reset an entire connection, not so useful if you just want to delete individual portions. So use it sparingly, or really only as needed. At any rate, I will say it is about 10 till, so I'm going to do the poll questions, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to call it a day, like I said, a little bit early, just to make sure that I have enough time to answer your questions before I have to head out. Um, so let's do that real quick. There we go. And then uh, once we've done that, if like I said, if you have any questions, I'll be here till late. Otherwise, um, you're more than welcome to head out, and we'll see you on Wednesday for a nice full-length class with new material.